Hello my friends, welcome to the official Mobius mod tier list. Uh, it's not official by like the makers of the Mobius mod or anything, but it is official by me, and I am a fish, so we should be able to get into this and it'll be perfect and no one will have any issues with anything that I have to say. So let's just jump right into it. The Mobius mod was a huge amount of fun and I just want to have an excuse to talk about some of the units. We're going to go mostly in order Barracks, Factory, Starport, then Mercenary Compound. So let's start off with the Legionnaire. The Legionnaire takes the idea of the basic infantry, kind of like the Marine, and expands on it in a different direction. Where the Marine is that glass cannon, the Legionnaire is more of a well-rounded Ranger type unit that exists not as fodder, but as something that you want to keep around the entire time. I like that design. I like the idea that it is a unit that you look at and you go, okay, this is a Marine analogous. I know when and where I'm supposed to use it, but then when you actually play it, it ends up playing very differently. That is exactly what you should be doing when you're making a custom campaign. It also has a very nice aspect to it where the healing that it gives itself obviously is good. And then the fact that it fires more slowly, however, it has higher damage means that if you're trying to fold it into other compositions, for example, if you are trying to play a mech composition and you need a mineral dump, maybe the Hellions are not working out, maybe you need some anti-air, the Legionnaire actually slots in very well there, in places the Marine just doesn't. So I'm a big fan. I'm going to put it in A tier because it's just, it feels good to use. All right, next up is the Hammer Fist Guard, the Marauder alternative. This guy is kind of just a Marauder. He's super, super chonky, of course, but he doesn't bring anything super new or exciting to the table. He's just a big, big beefcake with concussive shells that then naturally sits behind your other units because he has pretty good range. And as a result, I never got huge use out of him, and I was never super inspired to use him because he's so similar to the base one. He's not bad by any means, but I'm going to put him in B tier simply because the tiers are based on what I like and how fun I found the units to use. So this is, it's very average. It, it wasn't unfun by any means, but it was just a marauder. All right, the Grim Reaper. So the Grim Reaper is kind of interesting because it's very similar in what I said about the marauder. However, this is taking a unit that in Wings of Liberty is awful. The Reaper is just way too high of an investment and way too non-durable, which makes it a bad, bad unit. However, this mod takes that and brings it into being viable. Unlike the Hammerfist Guard, which it takes the Marauder, which is already one of the best units, and then continues to be the Marauder. So as a result, it feels like you get to play the Reaper that like the designers were feeling when they designed the Reaper. The ability to hit air is very nice. They shred stuff like Mutalisks. They combine very well with things like the Planetary Bunker, which is a fantastic new combination. The fact that they only take one infantry slot in a bunker instead of two is enormous, and it completely reinvents the unit. I like using it. I think that it is a solid A tier because of how much it's improved it uh, compared to the base game. The next is the Cerberus. I love the Cerberus. So Firebat's traditionally very weak. Nightmare took a bit of effort to make sure that the Firebat is brought up to snuff. However, it still isn't a top tier unit. And then this mod on top of that makes it a little bit chunkier with shields and stuff. And then adds that flame ability. The flame that reduces the armor and then uh, deals damage over time. I'm not sure how much damage over time it does. It doesn't seem to be super high, but it's nice to have. The armor reduction, though, means that it works really well in tandem with other units. And as a result, I really like it. It feels nice. Uh, I very rarely actually built it. However, every time that it was available on the Mercenary Compound, I would get a couple because they really do. You sprinkle them in and they do that frontline tanking job in a really nice way. Another A tier. Wow, this mod is doing really, really well in terms of design tiers, actually. Now that I look at it, that's phenomenal. Well, we haven't gotten to the starport yet. However, we're going to get to the field engineer next. This is the medic replacement. 
has the ability to heal both mech and bio. When I initially looked at it, I was like, that's a bit weird. Why does the, or why does the engineer have the ability to heal bio? But then I thought for, you know, a quarter of a second and I went, oh yeah, because they're just repairing the suit that the guys are in. An actual human in this world has like five HP. The fact that you couldn't repair by or uh, mech units, but you could repair bio with a medic actually doesn't make any sense in StarCraft. And this does make more sense. The grenades that it automatically fires, I think are overpowered. <laughs> They're really, really strong and they auto fire them. It reduces the effectiveness of biological units by a huge amount. And then the ability to deploy turrets is awesome. I love the fact that they took the medic and just, it was a complete reinvention into a different unit. But when you see field engineer and then you look at the abilities, it all makes sense and it just works really well. Field engineer, I'm actually putting S tier. It works with every composition. You always want a couple and they support really well in a variety of different ways. That's what you want in a support unit. Though it might be a little bit overpowered. It's real, real good. Where we're going next. We're going to the Spectre. So I'm going to be a little bit mean to the Spectre. The Spectre doesn't have a whole lot going on for it, except for the fact that it has the confusion ability from the Dark Archon instead of having the stun ability, which has a lot of overlap. However, confusion is way better. It's one of the best abilities in the game. It doesn't work on massive or heroic units in this. However, I don't personally enjoy confusion because it's too overpowered, which means that I didn't really get to use the Spectre. I completely admit that it's an interesting and fun design that works off of the psionic powers of the Spectre. And as a result, I'm going to give it B tier, but I just, I couldn't bring myself to actually use the unit because of how strong it is. And that feels very sad. All right. Next up is going to be the Condor Hellion. I like the Condor Hellion. It basically takes the Vulture and the Hellion, mushes them together, and makes a unit that's kind of bulky. It can fire while moving. It only costs minerals, which is always a great combination. You can put it in front of your mech army, and it does its job. It also has the ability to lay a couple mines. And one thing I was thinking of that's really nice, actually, as I was laying the mines with them, is because it's more expensive than the Vulture, the mine spam is kept to a reasonable level. I actually think that vultures lay way too many mines in the base game. It's super busted. So I like the fact that it is, there's a lot of duplicates on this tier list. Oh no. <laughs> well, we're going to have to live with it. I apologize now that I'm looking at this. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> we'll figure this out. I'm going to, I'm going to put the condor in a tier. Because I think that it fixed one of the big issues with the Vulture, though the Vulture was super overpowered, and it's more reasonable than the Vulture, but it also brings the Hellion up to being solid and good. So I like that quite a bit, and I guess we're doubling down on these tiers because I'm incompetent, and I don't want to start recording again. <laughs> uh, Maybe we'll just put them, I don't know, right there. What is next? The Heavy Crucio Siege Tank. I'm sorry, I'm putting this in D tier. It's so boring. So this unit is the siege tank, but a little bit bulkier and has a 50% chance to stun. I hate this because there is nothing that you can do except for hope that it works. There's no skill involved. There's no, di you don't use it in any different way besides the siege tank. It's just the siege tank. And I've made enough siege tanks in this game, man. Like, <laughs> I've made so many of them. And this is just the same thing, but with a RNG component. And I don't like randomness. I actively dislike randomness in games. So, not a super big fan. The Widow Mine is cool. I like the idea that they took, or they combined the Vulture and the Hellion, so they had an open slot. Why not just try out this unit? I'm not sure how great it is. I think that it could be really good if you find the right times. I often just find myself not thinking about when it could be good because I don't think about it. There's definitely ways to abuse it because the AIs tend to like clump up in very specific locations before coming to attack. 
And if you had Widow Mines around that area, you would be able to cheese a lot of the attack waves. It feels like a very feast or famine unit, and when I'm personally playing on Nightmare difficulty, I want consistent and reliable. However, I do respect the fact that it's in. I'm going to give it a nice solid B tier. B tier is pretty good. Alright, Diamondback. So, I've always been critical of the Diamondback in StarCraft 2 because it is generally worse than the Siege Tank in every single way. It's about the same cost. It is anti-armor. It is barely better than the tank mode Siege Tank in the base game, despite costing more supply. So the fact that they made this into like the Siege Breaker unit, not the Siege Breaker Siege Tank Mercenary, but like the guy that they have heavy fortifications, you take a line of Diamondbacks in the front and you just charge in with them with their hardened shields so they take super reduced damage. It feels great. One of the things I was thinking of throughout the entire thing is I was constantly like, man, I wish I could use more Diamondbacks, but I keep like experimenting with all the other stuff. And I know for a fact this is just really good. Um, I really enjoyed using it. Like every single time I used it, I enjoyed it. And it took a unit that is bad and made it really have its niche. And it's not just like a niche niche. It's actually like a pretty solid one. I'm putting it in an S tier. I really like what was done with it. Good design. The Goliath is next. And the Goliath is just more Goliath, if that makes sense. So I'm not... It has the ability to move while hitting air units, and that is basically the natural evolution on the Goliath. I do like it. I think that it makes it easier to control. It's pretty fun. It uh, works with that whole idea of the Diamondback Condor Goliath movie while shooty. However, it's not super inspiring. The Goliath is just the Goliath. It's kind of a ball of stats, and... For that reason, I'm going to give it B tier. They're always a little bit clunky to use, you know. However, they're a lot more clunky than the Thor. <laughs> um, The Thor is not super changed in this mod. It's mostly the same exact thing. The rebuilding ability is from Nightmare, not from this. And then the Siege Cannons, which are a really powerful ability, were replaced with a much more niche version that can only target massive. It does have the ability to hit both ground and air massive units. However, being able to have a zone that you click that explodes things, I think was a lot more flexible. The Thor in general is a unit that I wish I liked more. I keep trying to go for it. I keep wanting to like it. And every time that I do a run or a mission that I go for big Thor energy, I'm kind of, I'm left underwhelmed. It is very slow, very clunky doesn't micro well, gets stuck on a bunch of stuff, which is impressive in StarCraft 2, and it's just kind of a ball of stats, and Mobius Mod didn't really do anything to improve that. And as a result, I, my personal distaste for the Thor is going to put it into the C tier. The Sephirim Viking is um, a Viking. It just has more stats. I can't really say more about it. It just doesn't have... I think that if this mod is to continue to get more updates, the Viking, the Thor, and probably the uh, Nightingale Banshee are the three that I think should be looked at because the Nightingale Banshee is, um, it's a Banshee. It does what Banshee does. And as a result, I was not inspired to use any of these units. They're absolutely functional. The Viking and the Banshee do their own thing and they're very good at it. But at, when I'm playing a custom campaign, I'm looking for the spicy stuff, you know? And these just aren't super spicy. The Battlecruiser, on the other hand, I actually think is very similar to the Thor in that normally it's very slow and clunky to work with. However, Nadral identified that and tried something very interesting in taking away one of the upgrades and giving it a movement speed boost. It feels good to use. It feels much better than the stock Battlecruiser to use. And as a result, I enjoyed it. I made them, I used them in all in in order to punch down the Nidus Worms. I used them in Shatter the Sky because I just wanted to and I liked the idea of them moving quickly. And both of the times that I did, it felt good. 
It felt like when things went wrong, I had the ability to react. Not like I was lightning speed across the map or anything, because I wasn't. But I wasn't a brick. So I, I like it. I'm going to put it in a nice solid B tier. All right, we're getting to the home stretch. Let's keep going. The Phantom Dropship. I really, really, really like the idea that Nadral said, okay, the dropship is, or the medevac is almost always a healing unit. And then it has like the secondary dropship mechanic going on in the campaigns. What if we built a full dropship? Unfortunately, this is not his fault. It is the mission design's fault, particularly on Nightmare. The enemy is equipped to deal with drops, particularly drops that do not come from a very bulky unit that also happens to save your units when it gets killed. As a result, the dropship, the phantom dropship, is an insane risk and doesn't really bring a whole lot to the table. But I do have a lot of respect for the fact that he tried to make drops work, and I would not be surprised uh, when some people are playing Mobius if they find some really cool locations that the Phantom can actually make stuff work in. So I like it because it makes me think. However, I can't give it more than B because uh, I can't think of anything useful to do with it. Hercules. I really like the Hercules. The, uh, the, what is it? The, not the lore, but the, like the feeling of, wait, if you have a giant cargo ship, it makes sense. Like in real life, when you have those, well, they're literally called Hercules dropships. In real life, they take a long time to unload. They have a lot of parts. They have a lot of stuff. It's hours and hours. The idea of landing a Hercules and then training troops out of it very much so feels in the same vein of that. It's just like we have so much cargo. It takes us physical amounts of time to get everything out and ready. We have a couple guys that are like ready to deploy instantly and secure the area, and then we can just keep getting stuff out of it. It feels very lore accurate and very like real world analogous. It also is a very safe dropship, and I do like having dropships. It's the same reason I rated the uh, Phantom dropship pretty high, despite it not being great, is I love the idea of a dropship. And the Hercules actually does it well because it's safe to drop with. So all in all, I'm going to put it in A tier. I love the fantasy of doing a drop, securing the area, landing it down, and then training troops out of it. It works. Another unit that I really like is the Missile Frigate. The Wraith obviously is a meme in StarCraft. It's not very good. And instead of trying to rebuild the Wraith, Nadrol just went, well, I'm just going to make my own thing. He didn't take the Liberator and just toss it in. He truly went off on his own direction. And as a result, he came up with a really cool unit. It feels good to micro. It's very expensive, so you got to be careful with it. Uh, it has the mobility and the durability to be pulled back and healed by the drones. But it's also not super high durability for the cost because of that huge expense. And then it's just, I don't know. I just, I really like it. The missile pods ability is hilarious. <laughs> The fact that it's autocast and doesn't cost a resource makes it actually pretty darn good. The main reason that Missile Pods is garbage on the Battlecruiser is you're giving up a Yamato Cannon to do a much worse Yamato Cannon. But in this circumstance, it's actually probably overpowered. <laughs> all in all, I think the Missile Frigate is a very, very strong unit. Probably overpowered. But also, I really admire the fact that Nadra was able to come up with his own unit and make it feel so good to use. So I'm putting it in a nest here. Science Vessel is the recreation of a unit that, or rather, it's like taking a unit and rebuilding it from the ground up. It now has a recall, which is kind of similar to a dropship where it's tough to use. In theory, I guess you actually want to keep a Science Vessel at home and then recall back sometimes but there's not a whole lot of times that you actually want to do that in wings of liberty because generally if you're making a push you're making a push right like you're going to go kill however i like the idea it opens up tactical flexibility and then replacing the heal ability with guardian shield is nice it works really well in tandem with the field engineers to give you this very durable composition 
And I love synergies like that. It's pretty expensive. You can't get too many. And it's not like world ending on its own, but I like tossing one or two of them into the army and I think that they're pretty cool. So I'm going to give it A tier. The SCV, not something I've ever put on a tier list before, I think. Uh, the fact that the SCV can turn into the Herc is awesome. I, I would meme and give it S tier for that, but I think that just reasonably, the fact that the SCV has this extra little bit of value added to it is cool. It's also more expensive than the normal SCV, but mine's more. I don't know the math on it. I assume that that makes it way better than the basic SCV. All in all, though, SCV has new stuff to it, and it's already one of the best units in the game because it's the SCV, and that's awesome. Now we have four heroes to go, and then we have to talk about the units that I didn't get in the run. So we're going to go for the heroes first. Jim, I'm going to give A tier. His, uh, in... <laughs> He's worse in micro missions, and he's absurd in macro missions. His line-based AoE damage ability is insane against armored targets on the ground. The number of immortals or vanguards or wrathwalkers that I sniped with this is huge. He saved so many lives. Tanks as well. Just anything that's armored. Oh, and ultralisks. The fact that it does massive damage against armored and not as much against other stuff means that it's fair. You're not blowing your way through a million Zerglings. But you can take down that high-priority target, and he is he's a people saver. Tychus, on the other hand, I think is a little bit worse, because generally light units are not the big problem. Those armored specific targets, it's so useful to snipe them, because they're the thing that's going to kill your army. However, Tychus's grenade does bonus damage against light, and like, I don't know, man, 15 Zerglings. It's cool when you kill 15 Zerglings in one shot, but it's not actually the most important thing in the world. Your army was probably fine against them anyway. However, he is uh, a pretty rapid attacker who scales well. He goes in bunkers very nicely because he just murders everything while in there. So I'm going to give him a solid B tier. Swan, I think, is also B tier. Betty is pretty good. The repairability is nice to have. It's just a little support thing. He's not, like, crazy, but uh, Betty, it, Betty's utility is just kind of nutty. If you need a big durability, if you need to be able to retreat, it's something to soak shots. It's phenomenal at the beginning of fights. However, you can't use it all the time, and uh, Swan himself, combat-wise, is pretty bad. So it's kind of a wash there. He's solid. And then, of course, we have Egon Stepman. Egon doesn't have the ability to heal things like the Engineer does. He only heals Bio. He has the same grenade that they do. I believe it's a carbon copy of the ability. And then he has Irradiate. His heal rate is really high, though. And, of course, he comes back from the dead after being targeted down. And the AI in Brutal and Nightmare really likes targeting down medics, which I believe includes Stepman. Stepman, Stepman's S tier, boys. <laughs> He's insane against Zerg. Having a ton of irradiates just available to throw out at a cheap cost is a bonkers ability. And then, in theory, it shouldn't be S tier because, like, well, Grant, if you're going for mech, then you don't have the ability to... No, the engineers, the engineers need someone to keep them alive as they're keeping the mech alive. This synergy is actually insane. It just makes everything so so freaking durable. It's amazing. Stepman is S tier, and I do not regret it one little bit. <laughs> He's amazing. He's better than Jim, Tychus, or Spawn. I would take him every single time. We have a couple more units. First is the Ghost. So, I'm not going to rate the final units. That's why I didn't put them on the tier list, and instead accidentally put the factory units twice. Not just the factory, just a couple, a random smattering of things ended up in twice. Nailed it, Grant. So, there's three units that I didn't get to do. Or is it just two? No, three units. There is the Raven, the Ghost, and the Predator. I'm not going to rank them because it's not fair to those units because I didn't get to play with them. However, the Ghost is mostly the Ghost but has an autocast snipe ability. That's insane. It's so good. Also, it hits, uh, it hits everything instead of just biological. I'm pretty sure that Mass Ghost with a Stepman and some field engineers is actually unbeatable. <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure it just mows through everything in the entire game. It's ridiculous. 
they're probably very, very good. Uh, so they're probably as overpowered as the Spectre, and I guess that means that I should probably think of them in the same tier because they'd invalidate everything. All right. The Predator is, from what I saw, it has, like, permanent invisibility while hold position that cannot be detected. And then it jumps on things and does huge damage to Psionic. That's super, super niche. It's also really cool. I love the idea of an ambush predator. It takes what is basically a dumb A-move unit with a cat doggy, like feline canine shell, a little bit of both, mostly feline, and um, makes it, like thinks about what a predator would actually be and then goes on with it. And ambush predators are some of the most successful predators. <laughs> so... It feels really cool, the idea with that. It probably is really good against Kerrigan. And I, w I think I'm, at some point I'm going to go back and I'm going to go about Predator Kerrigan a little bit because it just seems really fun. Uh, I love the design. It seems awesome. And I wish that the Hercules and the Predator were not exclusive because they both seem really, really cool. And then is finally the Raven. The Raven's changes were that it no longer has the auto turret ability. And instead it has Cloak. And it has the Wraith attack. I believe that Seeker Missile was also reduced in cost, though I don't remember. It might just be cheap in the base game. Eh. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> probably shouldn't have, I probably should have ended it on the Predator and done the Raven before, because that's kind of like a... I don't know. It's, it's alright. I think that the Science Vessel is a lot more interesting, had a lot more thought put into it for being a revamped unit. So I'm not, like, super inspired by it. However, hitting stuff with a million Seeker Missiles is really fun. So I'll give it that. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, this is my tier distribution. Um, I was fairly generous with the S tiers today, largely because I am such a big fan of people trying to redesign things. And I think that Natural did a phenomenal job. In fact, I think this is the most S tiers I've ever given in a tier list by a large margin. And I need to be wary of that because I don't like be giving everything S tier. I think the distribution overall is very positive, but also pretty reasonable. We got that nice bell curve going. However, it is a very highly ranked bell curve overall. And I think that that shows my basic feeling on the Mobius mod. Everything was well thought out, well put together, and a lot of fun to play. And I hope that this is the introduction of Nadral into the scene in a way that is very, very positive. And he continues to make stuff because he's obviously a very bright person. I keep saying he, but I have no idea. Anyways, guys, this has been my tier list of the Mobius mod. I like everything here. I think that they all feel good to use and everything was a blast to play. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.